To those familiar with French New Wave cinema, the name Eric Romer needs no introduction. Yet, it could also be said that Romer, in spite of his prestigious standing within cinephile circles, is admittedly less of a household name than, say, Jean-Luc Goddard or François Truffaut. He occupies a stratum that includes similarly revered, perhaps less universally known names like Agnes Varda, Claude Chabrol, and Jean-Pierre Melville, artists whose accomplishments have only grown richer with time. If Godard's experimental, politically incendiary work took him to the furthest reaches of what cinema as a medium would allow while Truffaut devoted most of his career to examining the pitfalls of youth and young manhood, then Romer too undeniably had a thing that was his and his alone. Romer's specialty was crafting literary feeling works of cinematic humanism, almost always centered around bourgeois intellectuals who were frequently teetering on the precipice of some kind of moral crisis. Romer's characters are always saying the quiet part out loud, constantly overanalyzing other people's behavior in a manner that generally comes naturally only to academics and actors in French movies. Their business involves traversing the gulf between how they feel and how they're carrying themselves in the real world. Romer's film work spans the early 1960s all the way into the 2000s, and in spite of being known for making what most would now know as an Eric Romer movie, the man never received appropriate credit for how experimental he ultimately allowed himself to get, see, the droll, heightened Arthurian fantasy of Percival, the unassuming anthology effort, Rendezvous in Paris, and the uncommonly candid voiceover in Chloe in the Afternoon, to name but a few. The truth is that Romer is every bit as influential as Goddard and Truffaut, perhaps even more so, particularly when one considers that writer-slash-directors like Noah Baumbach, Alex Ross Perry, Hong sang Su, and Mia Hansen love all owe a considerable creative debt to his work. Baumbach took his worship of Romer a step further than most, titling his 2007 psychodrama Margot at the Wedding in the style of something like Pauline at the Beach. So, without further ado, here are five of our favorite classic films from this iconic director to get your Romer binge started. Enjoy! The Aviator's Wife The first entry in Romer's Comedies and Proverbs series that also includes gems like The Green Ray and Boyfriends and Girlfriends, The Aviator's Wife is a blissfully meandering study of jealousy and wayward discovery that plays out as a kind of low-stakes detective story told in reverse. Our hero, Francois, Philippe Marlowe, is a typical Romer protagonist, privileged, intelligent, and insecure, with far too much time on his hands. One day, Francois sees the girl he loves hanging out with her ex, a dashing airline pilot. Consumed with the notion that his partner is cheating on him, Francois starts to follow the pair around, only to stumble into more surreptitious, unexpected discoveries along the way. While the notion of a possessive man following a woman around based on little more than a hunch could play out disastrously in the wrong hands, Romer, as always, keeps things light and martini dry, never once forgetting that the joke is on Francois pomposity and unchecked sense of male entitlement. My Night at Mods My Night at A Mods is a wistful reminiscence, shot in grainy, gorgeous BNW, that marks the first feature-length effort in the Moral Tales series. The film is a peerless study of asceticism and desire, and how our basic need for human connection, sexual, romantic, or otherwise, is often at odds with our selfish desire for solitude. French cinema legend Jean-Louis Trontignon, Amour, the conformist, plays Jean-Louis, a dour and overly righteous man who has his principles challenged when he finds himself attracted to a forthright of Orsi named Maud, a magnificent Francoise Fabian, over the course of one night where seemingly everything and nothing happens all at once. My Night at Maud's, if nothing else, sees Romer evolving from the bittersweet, 
somewhat jagged ruminations that define early short-form work like The Bakery Girl of Monzo and Suzanne's Career, both part of the Moral Tales series, to the now fully formed aesthetic that we can readily identify as the Romer style. Pauline at the Beach The third and most evocative entry in the Comedies and Proverbs series, Pauline at the Beach is a film that evokes the sticky sensation of a humid, aimless summer's day, it's a work full of exposed flesh, barely suppressed longing, and an overriding sense of ennui. Few filmmakers are as adroit at portraying downtime in the act of wasting the hours away, and Pauline at the Beach ends up being quietly riveting even when it feels like nothing is really happening. The story of two girls, Pauline, Amanda Lonley, and Marion, Ariel Dumbal, who are vacationing at a beachside family home on the coast of France. Pauline, like any great Romer film, is a study of people who are hindered by the compulsion to think before they act. It is a rueful comedy of errors filled with unrequited desires and things left unsaid. In practice, though, Pauline feels as pleasant as a breeze blowing through your hair on a cool August afternoon. La Collection You Say Subtitled The Collector for its female lead who is said to be a collector of men, La Collection You Say is both one of the most visually arresting pictures Roma ever directed, and also one of the most stinging condemnations of masculinity in the entirety of the French Nouvelle Vague. The film concerns two rich, Board friends who are determined to spend their summer doing as little as possible beyond swimming, reading, and engaging in the odd philosophical debate. Their fragile bubble of codependent, masturbatory laziness bursts upon the arrival of Ida, Ida Politoff, a young woman whose carefree ways throw the men's idle habits into disarray. There is a tendency in some French new wave pictures to either romanticize or gloss over gross male behavior, so it's refreshing to see an artist as normally even-tempered as Romer eviscerate the male ego to the degree that he does here. Filmed with largely available natural light by cinematographic legend and regular Romer collaborator Nestor Almendros, Days of Heaven, La Collection You Say is a criminally overlooked jewel in this filmmaker's crown. Claire's Knee If you had to show a friend one Eric Romer film that somehow contains everything that makes him a singular, one-of-a-kind artist, you would probably show them Claire's Knee, which is something close to a perfect film. All the trademarks of an Eric Romer movie are here, the lush, postcard perfect locales, the languid, wandering conversations, the suggestion of intimacy, and the ruthless pull of temptation. Describing what the film is about is almost irrelevant, our hero meets an old acquaintance and eventually finds himself strangely pulled towards an enigmatic woman named Claire. The literal significance of the title alludes to our protagonist's yearning to touch something he knows he should not touch, arguably, the most pronounced authorial motif in all of Romer's filmography. While it's true that every film lover's favorite Romer movie varies from person to person, we would venture to guess that most would include Claire's knee in their top five when it comes to this particular director. 